I'm with uh, Police Chief uh, Tim McCarthy of Orland Park, who uh, is an American hero, uh, served in the Secret Service for many years in 1981, uh, defending President Reagan, uh, helped save his life, and took a bullet for doing that, and we're happy that he recovered. So the pride of Illinois, went to the University of Illinois, Leo High School on the south side, been a friend of mine for a long time. I was with Tim a week or two ago when I signed a bill called Julie's Law to help protect uh, public safety in Illinois. And that's why we're here today, because we believe in public safety. For a long time, I've believed in banning assault weapons in our state and also banning large capacity ammunition magazines that go with those assault weapons. So this morning, I am mandatorily vetoed a bill that arrived at my desk in order to give the legislature an opportunity to put into law a ban on assault weapons in Illinois and a ban on large capacity ammunition magazines. I think this is a time for our state legislature to come together and vote on a very important public safety measure for our state. In my message to the legislature, I say that it as governor, my foremost duty is to protect the public safety of the people of Illinois from deadly violence and especially protect our, our children. And I think it's very clear that these particular weapons are not designed to do anything but to have human targets. Uh, and I think it's time for us as a people in Illinois to um, enact legislation similar to what they've done in California. Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, uh, to ban these particular weapons. Uh, I think the safety of the people of Illinois will be enhanced by this particular uh, measure enacted into law. Uh, we have, pursuant to our Constitution in Illinois, an opportunity for the governor to take a bill that arrives on his desk and make it better. That's what I've done this morning. I expect the legislature to address this issue to vote on the issue and to hopefully approve the issue and make this the law of the land, <clears throat> the law of the la land of Lincoln. And I'd like to have uh, Tim McCarthy, Chief McCarthy, um, who has uh, worked with the chiefs of police all across Illinois, say a few words and take it from there, Tim. Well, thank you, Governor. Uh, I certainly support this initiative. Uh, there is no law that solves every problem. However, we have seen this summer alone and as chair of the South Suburban Major Crimes Task Force, an increase over the years in weapons using high capacity magazines, in assault weapons, whether it's an assault rifle, a pistol, or even a shotgun. And we have seen an increase in that. But I think this law will help uh, law enforcement. It'll help reduce violence against our residents. It'll help reduce violence against our police. It will help keep guns, uh, these type of guns, out of gang members and out of the hands of cartel members. So while there's no law that's ever been passed that solve every problem, it's time we've taken this step. I applaud the governor for doing so, for having the courage to do so. And as chair of the Illinois Chiefs Legislative Committee, it'll be on our agenda in August. And I hope uh, we will be able, uh, that all of our chiefs across the state will support this. But of course, it has my 100% support as a law enforcement official for almost 40 years. And governor, thank you again uh, for introducing this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> I'm glad to answer any questions. So you're taking a bill, you're gutting it of what it says, and you're starting something completely different. Is that constitutional? Uh, the d bill deals with public safety. Uh, it deals with the subject of ammunition for weapons. Uh, this is germane to that particular topic. Uh, the people of Illinois, in their wisdom in 1970, enacted the Constitution by referendum that gives the governor this constitutional power. The people of our state in 1974 reaffirmed uh, their belief that the governor should have the power to have this amendatory process. I've exercised that. I think it's particularly appropriate now. I went to a wake on Friday night in Crystal Lake, Illinois, the wake of John Larimer. Uh, May God bless his immortal soul, a United States uh, sailor in the United States Navy. He went to a, a movie about a week before 
in Aurora, Colorado, uh, with other sailors, and also his girlfriend, and uh, he was killed by an assault weapon that had a large capacity ammunition magazine. And I think it's time that we have this debate in Illinois uh, to ban these weapons and ban these large capacity uh, ammunition magazines that are designed to uh, have deadly force uh, and violence uh, inflicted on innocent people. And I think it's very important that we do that now. Do you have a no rule about it this way? Why not just <clears throat> This legislation has been introduced by uh, Representative Acevedo in the House, Senator Munoz in the Senate. Uh, I think that it's very appropriate to take that, uh, those bills, those ideas, and amend them onto the bill that arrived on my desk so we can have a debate, so we can have a vote. The legislature will have an opportunity to vote for a ban on assault weapons, vote for a ban on large capacity ammunition magazines. I think the people of our state strongly support uh, the act that I've done this morning, this legislation that uh, needs to be enacted, and we need to have a vote. And this is why we're doing it this way. Governor, do you think that this is, uh, the timing of this, how do you hope that the timing of this will influence what I think our whole country understands that it's time for the people to act when it comes to assault weapons, uh, as Tim mentioned, assault weapons are used by gangs, by cartels, by those who would inflict violence on innocent people, and we've got to do something about it. I live on the west side of Chicago. Uh, uh, Tim grew up on the south side of Chicago. I think it's very important that we protect all the people of Chicago, of the suburbs, and of downstate. And I think this law that I've proposed by my uh, action today will protect the public safety of Illinois. That's the fundamental right of all citizens. I believe in the Second Amendment of our Constitution. I've sworn an oath to uphold our Constitution, every single amendment, and I believe in it, the right to bear arms. But I also believe there is a right of public safety, a right to have security in your person. And going, whether it's to a movie theater, or going to a class at a university, or going to a shopping mall and being exposed to assault weapons with these large ammunition, uh, large capacity ammunition ma magazines is a, uh, a peril to the everyday citizen and their right to have public safety. I don't think there's any question that I think all of those who lost their life in Aurora, Colorado, all 12, and all those people who are injured, uh, they want us to take action. And I think that uh, it's time for the people to band together in our state, which is in the heart of the heartland of the United States of America, and do something about these assault weapons and all these large uh, ammunition magazines that go with them. Uh, we have to do something. We cannot stand idly by. Uh, I think we should remember those who lost their lives and carry on with something that uh, will make things better for our, our children and their children. Governor Quinn, you say you supported this for a long time, you know, pre-Congress. Mm -hmm. Do you have some kind of statistics that you're pointing to? How many people in the have died from these types of weapons? Other groundwork that you've been doing over time? Well, you know, I've been asked about this from time to time. Uh, we'll be happy to provide statistics. I, I was at Northern Illinois University on February 14th of 2010, uh, I'm sorry, 2009, exactly one year after five students were uh, gunned down in their own classroom. And I went to the funerals of each and every one of those students. And I think it's important that we, when we see these violent episodes, these hor horrific massacres of innocent people, of good men and women who are making a difference uh, for all of us, when they lose their lives to assault weapons and these uh, deadly ammunition magazines, we need to do something about it. We cannot be passive. We must act uh, on the behalf of the common good. Well, I think that it's important that the people be heard. I think the people of our state, I think the people of America, believe in what I'm trying to do here today on behalf of the people of Illinois, to give the legislature an opportunity to enact a ban on assault weapons, a ban on these magazines that carry uh, enormous amounts of ammunition that can be fired off 
over and over again uh, to put human beings and human targets uh, in deadly peril. Can I ask Chief McCarthy a question? Uh, you know, we've, you know, over here, Tim. Past, uh, probably actually get the microphone next. <clears throat> you know, Mr. Lafayette, uh, and the National NRA, and then uh, Mr. Pearson and Mr. Vandermeid down in Springfield always mock these bands, and they say two things. definition is, is difficult to, to draw, and that uh, minor modifications can easily circumvent the definition. Uh, and then secondly, that on the, on the large magazines, uh, a, a skillful armorer can just fashion it himself and then walk into a theater and do the same thing. How do you respond? Well, that's correct. And in, in the 1994 law that expired in 04, many of the gun makers did try to get around it. Uh, they did do that. Uh, we are going to have people trying to break the law no matter what we do, uh, sorry to say. But I think we have to do something and get started. And I know Mr. Vandermeid, I know his views on it, but um, Justice Scalia was on television the other night, and he seemed to suggest that there are reasonable limits on firearms. He's written that. He's written that, okay. He says that, that, that it's clearly constitutional. Right. And, and what he said is, start legislating, and we'll take a look at it. And I think it's time we started legislating in this direction, and we'll let the courts sort, sort it out and let law enforcement go after those people who try to get around the ban. Governor, how do you respond to the sponsor of the bill you're rewriting who accuses you of doing this as a publicity stunt in the wake of the shooting? Well, I think I'm the governor of our state, and I think uh, my first foremost duty is to protect public safety. I think all of us in America, when we woke up on that Friday morning, knew that uh, something terrible had happened, not just to the people in, in that movie theater, but to all of us. And it's uh, imperative that we act, not to uh, stand by. And so that's what I'm doing. I uh, would say that was certainly reminded to, to me on Friday night when I met the mom and dad of John Larimer, 27 years old. He's the exact same age as my youngest son. And he graduated from high school at the same time as my youngest son. And he lost his life to an assault weapon uh, with these uh, deadly uh, ammunition magazines carrying round after round. Uh, and there was uh, poured into that movie theater. So it's time to act. And I think it's time for all of us to come together in our state capitol and vote. Uh, I've provided the opportunity for the legislature to do so. And I think it'll make our state a better place if we enact this law. Well, I think it's important that uh, the members of the legislature understand that uh, their foremost duty is to vote on matters affecting public safety, and this is one of them. Well, I received over 500 bills on my desk in just the last few weeks, and I'm going through them one after one after one. It just so happened. Uh, that the bill that I've mandatorily uh, changed here uh, came uh, shortly after the events in Aurora, Colorado. And when I looked at it, I said, well, maybe this is the time for us to put together an opportunity for people in Illinois, our whole population, 13 million people, to have a statewide debate, uh, discussion on this very important topic. And I think uh, the way to do it is what I did this morning. And uh, now we will have that uh, opportunity for the people of Illinois to speak and for legislators to listen. Should lawmakers add this to their docket in August, or should they wait for the Well, I'll leave it up to the legislature. I've acted today, and it's uh, now time for them to take what I have done and uh, listen. And I hope act properly, in my opinion, uh, would be to approve my changes and make this the law of the land our state, Illinois. I think it will send a great message to the whole country that the people of Illinois uh, are willing to uh, come together in the best traditions of Abraham Lincoln's democracy and do something about the plague of assault weapons and uh, deadly uh, high capacity ammunition magazines. This issue has been uh, considered by the Illinois Supreme Court on several occasions, and they've been, uh, I think, very clear that the governor has this power. They've affirmed the power. Uh, the voters. He, he, he claims that, as a member of the CONCON, he 
Mm -hmm. and it's certain. It's okay. Certain. It doesn't work that way in the law. The way the law reads is the intent of the people when they ratified the Constitution. What was their intent? The people voted in 1970. It's very clear. They then again voted. Uh, there was an effort by the legislature to water down the governor's power to make these changes. The people rejected that. They affirmed the right of the governor to act. Uh, the Supreme Court in taking cases has affirmed that right. And I think it's important that we use that right uh, in a proper way to protect the public safety right now, right here in, in so Illinois. What is there, can we ask the truth, what is there in the Constitution that says a governor can add such substantive The bill itself deals with ammunition, and the, I think it's very clear that uh, this bill has been changed to deal with the ammunition issue, as well as that uh, those weapons that uh, deliver the ammunition. I think it's germane. I think any person with, looking at it would consider it very germane, and I think it's very appropriate right now to have this opportunity for the people of Illinois to have their legislature come and consider what I've done. So you have a in this bill, um, it looks to be a provision that would allow a grandfather. And if, if this is grandfather. You got two guys asking questions. Why don't you say? Does anyone have any idea of how many of these assault weapons there already are in the state of Illinois? Well, uh, with respect to the issue of banning assault weapons, that's what we're trying to do. And so when we act, we will uh, hopefully, when the law is passed and approved by the legislature, then proceed to enforce the law. You, you, don't have any, you don't have any sense of how many are out there right now? I don't know the specific number. I don't know if anybody does. No, we know they're being used more than they have in the past. But the mm -hmm. number, I, I yeah. would have no idea. Yeah. You, you have right. a provision in here that, that makes it look, if I'm reading this right, that there would be some grandfathering allowed for people that have these, these weapons. Now, as long as they, I guess, uh, essentially register their weapons with the state police, why ask law-abiding citizens with FOID cards to register their weapons when you know that it's the gang members and mm -hmm. others who are not following the law to begin with, they're not going to come and register their weapons? Well, my view is it's appropriate to act as I did this morning in making this change on behalf of the public safety of Illinois. I invite the legislature and the people of Illinois to have a full-fledged dialogue, discussion, debate on this very important subject. We should show the nation that when something really bad happens, as happened in Aurora, Colorado, a horrific massacre, that we don't stand idly by. We take action to deal with the source of that problem, and uh, I think we have done that today. Thank okay? You. All right? Thank you. Thanks, Tim.